Hello everyone. I hope you're all all right today. Okay, get yourself settled down because I'm going to tell you a story. And the story today is called Snow at the Zoo. Okay, if you're all ready. France is not too far away and has some nice weather. Sometimes. The day we are talking about, it was snowing. The sky was full of grey clouds from which big snowflakes fell for hours. Jacques, the zookeeper, you could tell he was a zookeeper because it said zookeeper on his hat in French, was wondering if his animals were going to have to stay inside all day. The giraffes were shivering. The kangaroos were jumping up and down to keep warm. The elephants were sneezing, and that makes a lot of noise when you've got a trunk. The cheetahs had chattering teeth, which sounded exactly like a Spanish dancer's castanets. Clickety-click-click. Jacques was unhappy because his animals were cold. He knew they would be all right indoors because they couldn't freeze in there, and he would make sure that they had plenty of food to eat. But they really needed some fresh air. Not many visitors came to the zoo that day, only those who could walk there. It was too snowy to drive because the roads were slippery. That was why there weren't any buses either. Arriving on a train would have been fine, but there was no railway station anywhere near the zoo. Probably a lot of people stayed at home disappointed because they couldn't get there. One person who could go to the zoo was Jacques' granny. Her name was Louise, but Jacques always called her granny. That's grand-mère in French, but I suppose you knew that already. Granny Louise was taking Jacques a ham and cheese baguette for his lunch, along with a big flask of hot, hot coffee. She'd had hers before she came out, so she was warm already. She was also wearing a long brown coat, a green woolly beret and a thick blue and white striped scarf that she had knitted herself. When she got to the zoo, which was actually next door to her house, she could see that all the poor animals were staying indoors today because of the snow. They all looked so sad and miserable. The gorilla was staring out of his enclosure at the falling snow and looking like he would never be happy again. When Granny Louise arrived at Jacques' office, she could see that he was sad too. He sat by the desk, staring down at a piece of paper, even though there was nothing written on it. He was very glum. Oh, Jacques, said his granny, in French, of course. You look most dejected. Your face is enough to stop a clock. What's the matter? Hello, Granny, replied Jacques. He still remembered to be polite, even though he was fed up. I'm feeling very sorry for all the animals, because they can't go out today in case they catch cold. Let's go for a walk and see if we can cheer them up, said Granny Louise. They were just about to go out of the door when Jacques remembered that he hadn't put a scarf on. I nearly forgot it, and you knitted it specially for me. Hmm, said Granny Louise thoughtfully. They took a brisk walk around the zoo and saw the sheltered chimpanzees, the indoor elephants and the inside impalas. You see, Granny Louise, said Jack, they dare not come out because of the cold. I have an idea said Granny Louise. We'll have them all outside in next to no time. With that, Granny Louise set off for her house at a very brisk trot. She must have got quite hot in her thick coat, beret and scarf. She must also have been on the phone soon because there were suddenly a load of grannies arriving at her house. They all had long coats and berets and scarves. Each of them carried a large canvas bag. Some of the bags were plain and some were flowery and some had pictures on. 
As they arrived at her house, they all said, Bonjour. The house was filled with lots of chattering grannies. Then suddenly it all went quiet. Granny Louise's house was very quiet. The road was quiet. Even the little birds in the trees had stopped their twittering. Nothing happened for ever such a long time. Then all the old ladies came marching out of the house and went straight to the zoo. You can imagine how surprised Jack was when all these senior citizens flocked into his office. In fact, they couldn't all flock in because there wasn't enough room and some of them had to flock outside the door and turn up their hearing aids to hear what was going on. Here we are, Jack, said Granny Louise. We've come to sort out your animals. Really? inquired Jack. But what can a load of old ladies do for my cold animals? Tell him, Louise, shouted one of the other grannies from the back, who had her hearing aid turned up really loud. Wait here and we'll show you, said Granny Louise. And she turned round and marched all the other ladies right into the middle of the zoo. Yvette, you take the monkey house, she ordered. And Yvonne, you go to the deer and the big cats. While you can go to the giraffes, Zaza, because you're the tallest. I shall deal with the elephants. Off the old ladies went, all busily going about their business. In hardly any time at all, Granny Louise was back in Jacques' office. Now you can come and see what the old ladies can do for cold animals, she told him. She marched him out of the office, a double step, which soon made him out of breath. There now, take a look, said Granny Louise. There were all the animals, out in the fresh air, and they seemed to be loving it, even though there was snow on the ground. Jack couldn't believe his eyes, mainly because... Each animal was wearing a scarf and a woolly beret, especially knitted by Louise and all her granny friends. Oh, merci beaucoup, grand-mère Louise, said Jack, which is French for thank you very much, Granny Louise, in case you didn't know. Granny Louise beamed at her grandson, and so did all her friends. Everyone was happy because they had helped the animals to get some fresh air after all, I hope you enjoyed that one. Bye for now.